Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming, DICE added more servers for Battlefield 4. The Epic Game Store leaked some big news, EA's stance on loot boxes is caving under pressure, and much more. The hype for Battlefield 2042 is spilling over to Battlefield 4. Players have been enduring massive server queues for the game ever since 2042 was revealed. The majority of Battlefield 4 servers are maintained by community members who pay to host custom servers. The sudden influx of players quickly overwhelmed the community's generosity. To alleviate the situation and ensure players can get into matches quickly, DICE are increasing server capacity in the US West region. That might leave some players in Europe hunting for server slots, but it should be a significant improvement to queue times for most other regions. We're curious to hear if you're going back to play Battlefield 4 these days. Let us know if you've been playing in the comments below. The Epic Games Store leaked an upcoming remaster of Alan Wake and a PC release for Final Fantasy VII Remastered. The leaks were discovered in the Epic Games Store database as codenamed title entries. The references for both games were quickly scrubbed from the title entries. It seems unlikely that the developers would use the actual names of existing games as placeholders for something else. Alan Wake's developer Remedy is currently working with Epic on two titles, a AAA multi-platform game and a smaller game set in the same universe. It sounds like Remedy might be working on an Alan Wake sequel and remastering the original game in the process. Rumors have been buzzing off and on for years that Remedy were seeking funding for a sequel. A couple of years ago, they acquired the rights to Alan Wake from Microsoft, who were the original publisher. Since then, Remedy went to release Quantum Break and Control, the latter of which has been a massive success for the developer. Partnering up with Epic to finance Alan Wake 2 seems like a smart move. As for Final Fantasy VII Remastered, Sony's 12-month exclusivity agreement for that game expired in April, but Square Enix haven't announced a release date for Xbox or PC. Assuming the leaks from the Epic Store are accurate, we could be on the verge of some big announcements. The next-gen update for Metro Exodus just launched for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles. It offers basically the same experience as the Enhanced Edition on PC, minus some ray tracing features. On top of the visual upgrades, the next-gen upgrade also adds an FOV slider, improved FPS, 4K rendering, and support for the PlayStation 5's haptic feedback. The upgrade is for anyone that owns the game on console. The one caveat is that users can't transfer their save files to the new version of the game on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox has a similar restriction. To make up for this, the developers added a chapter system that will let you start the game from any point in the story. Achievements are disabled if you use the chapter system to skip ahead though. As for the quality of life upgrade, it's a dramatic improvement across the board. If you own the game on console, it's definitely worth revisiting on next-gen hardware. I recently took a look at the enhanced edition running on PC, so check out that video if you want an idea of what it offers. EA has folded under pressure to be more transparent about FIFA's Ultimate Team Packs. Players can now preview what each pack contains before buying it. These previews have a timer that prevents you from previewing multiple packs of the same kind until it expires. While the timer is active, you can choose to open the pack or not. Doing so will cost the usual amount of FIFA Ultimate Team coins or FIFA points depending on the pack. And saying that this change is a big deal would be a massive understatement. EA have been brought to court in multiple countries because of FIFA's loot packs violating anti-gambling laws. It's unclear if the new pack pre view system will be enough to please the countries that took EA to court, but it's a step in the right direction. Today, Call of Duty news is just a quick update about yesterday's launch of Warzone Season 4. The update made several big balance changes that have upended the game's meta, but it also introduced a new armored truck in standard matches. Unfortunately, an invisibility exploit related to the armored truck quickly started making the rounds. Raven have removed the truck from the game to work on a fix. This isn't the first time a vehicle-related invisibility exploit was added in a Warzone update. The game's helicopters have come and gone multiple times because of the same exploit. Hopefully the developers can get these sorts of exploits under control for future updates. The Xbox Design Lab is open for business again. Microsoft shut it down during the Xbox Series X launch to ensure that they could meet demand for controllers. The service let users customize the color of all the parts of either the Xbox One or Xbox Series controller, and a fully customized controller, including engraving, will run you about $70. That's below average for similar services from third parties parties. Unfortunately, the Xbox Elite controller isn't available on the Design Lab. 
Outriders developer is making some significant changes to the game's grind. Legendary drop rates are being doubled in its next update. Level brackets that prevented certain qualities of loot from dropping are being removed as well, but base scaling still applies, so don't expect to start getting weapons way beyond your current level. The update also adds an anti-duplication system that re-rolls duplicate items once. In general, these sound like solid changes that should alleviate the grind for endgame loot. Co-op zombie survival FPS Back for Blood won't have an offline mode at launch. The game lets you play either with friends or alongside AI bots, but you'll have to be online to play at all. And that's sort of par for the course with games these days, but it's still unfortunate to see a game that supports solo play not allowing offline play as well. The managing director of Ubisoft Massive, David Pulfeld, is stepping down and taking a six-month break. He's stepping down at a pretty crucial time for the studio. They're currently knee-deep in development of an Avatar game, a Star Wars title, and maintaining The Division 2. The Avatar game was just revealed during E3, and the Star Wars title will be the first Disney-era title in the franchise not developed by EA. A lot is riding on the success of these games. Pulfeld said in his statement announcing his change of position that he had achieved everything I had once dreamed of. He's been with the studio for 17 years and his replacement as managing director has already been selected and he'll take on a new role at the company when he returns from his six month break. Co-op adventure title It Takes Two passed 2 million units sold since launch. That's a massive achievement for its studio Hazel Light. Their previous game A Way Out hit 3.5 million units sold this past January, but it launched back in 2018. It Takes Two is on track to surpass A Way Out sales in a matter of months. Before we get to our final story today, I just wanted to say happy Friday. We'll have a recap of this week's top stories for you tomorrow. Be sure to tune in for any story or coverage you might have missed. If you think we should revisit any stories in particular for the past week, let us know in the comments. Nintendo Switch users have been reporting major issues with downloading games and updates for over a week now. The problem manifests as an error code 21231502 and prevents users from downloading the game data from Nintendo servers. It sounds like an issue with the console's DNS settings, as resetting them to default and clearing the cache has resolved the problem for some users. That said, Nintendo Customer Service has reportedly told affected users that a firmware update is being developed to resolve the issue, but there's been no official word from Nintendo publicly. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.